Robert Lee Bullet Bob Turley pitched eight seasons for the New York Yankees during one of their most historic runs. He went to the World Series seven times and won four championship rings. Bob was named to the American League All-Star team three times, but the crowning moment of his distinguished career was 1958, when he became the only man in history to ever win the Cy Young, World Series MVP, and Hickok Belt Professional Athlete of the Year awards in the same season. If everybody had the intestinal fortitude in business or sports that uh, Bob Turley had, uh, they would all be successful. He's a very in uh, intelligent individual, uh, hard worker, uh, always was. And so I think when you really equate uh, Bob Turley's overall success, there's no question uh, he was probably destined to do that. Well, I had a hit against Bullet before uh, he came to the Yankees, and I hated it. He could throw really hard, and he could throw around 100 miles an hour, or maybe more, I don't know. Bob was an outstanding ball player that threw extremely hard. Known at Bullet as Bullet Bob in those days simply because he, he threw so hard. And not only was he voted the outstanding athlete, but I guess the Hickok Award is just something that uh, not too many people can walk around and say, I re received that as well as a Cy Young. Bob was recognized as a New York Yankee legend and the team held a moment of silence in his honor at Yankee Stadium on opening day, April 1st, 2013. His fastball was a work of art. His control picture perfect. They called him Bullet Bob, fireball pitcher. He rode his 96 mile an hour pitch to the Cy Young Award in 1958, a world championship and a series MVP with the New York Yankees. For eight years, Bob Turley made his home in the house that Ruth built. The saga of the pitcher who became the wealthiest ex-player in the country began in the playgrounds of East St. Louis, Illinois. After breaking in with the St. Louis Browns, Turley's big break came in 1954. It was in 1954 at the end of the season in October, and I was sitting home. My first son was born, Terry and I was sitting there holding him in my arms and I was feeding him and all of a sudden and watching the late show with I think Steve Allen was at that time and watching the late show and all of a sudden was, your picture flashes on the screen saying I've been traded to the New York Yankees I couldn't believe it I jumped up and screamed and yelled I was so excited about it holy smokes I mean Bob Turley from East St. Louis I'm pitching for the New York Yankees it's an unbelievable feeling his career in pinstripes peaked in 1958 when he was 21 and 7 Bullet Bob led the Yankees to a seven-game series victory over Milwaukee. He won the series MVP. What has been put into me all my life is the desire to want to win, the desire to want to excel, to do something special in life. Bob was a good competitor. We won more ball games in the Yankee while I was there with defense, pitching, and, learn and knowing how to play the game. We were a team. We were out to win a pennant where we'd all benefit by it. We didn't care about salaries. We weren't worried about jealousy, who was making more money than anybody else. We played as a team, and that's why the Yankees were successful. Bob was a competitor in uh, everything he did. We used to play, uh, uh, you know, in baseball, you have a lot of times to play cards, and I was always uh, against him at cards, and he remembered every card that was played. <laughs> and. He was a tough competitor playing cards. Bob's a pretty smart guy. <laughs> no dummy. Bob could sell ice to the Eskimos. Bob could do anything. The man, I can tell the man knew where every deal was in the world. And nothing surprises me about Bob. He was a highly motivated individual. Bob became a star early in his career, even before he joined the Yankees. And he was introduced to the nation by none other than the legendary Walter Cronkite. Now we come to a special feature on its news to me, which we call Eyewitness. Here the panel cross-examines a guest who actually saw a famous news event take place. Now let's meet tonight's Eyewitness. Will you come out, please? We're not going to tell you the name, panel, of our Eyewitness because we feel it would give away the event, so we're just going to call him Mr. X. Panel, if you can uncover the news event within two minutes, our guest receives $50. If you do not guess the news event, Mr. X will win $100 by beating you. Uh, did this happen on land? Yes. Did it have to do with baseball? Yes, it did. Are you a big league baseball player? Yes, I am. I hope so. Are you in the American League? Yes, I am. You're not with the Yankees, though, are you? No, not fortunately, I'm not. 
don't, I'm absolutely out of my field. I don't know anything about baseball at all. Uh, 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 did you catch a, a particularly long ball or something? No. <laughs> did you, did you no, make a home that. run or something? <laughs> no. You did, did, you, did you pitch a no-hit game? No. Did you, you're a pitcher? Yes, I am. You're with the Baltimore team? Yes. You're Bob Turley when you hit your head oh. in the old star game the other day. But you struck out what? A great many men on April 15th for a record, right? No, I struck out a few men if it wasn't a record. Careful. Ah, you whipped them. Bob, you whipped them. They couldn't get it. Tell them the event. Well, the event was that it was the first Major League Baseball game in uh, Baltimore in over 50 years. 52 years to be exact. We should have known that. That's the Big League Baseball came back to Baltimore at that time. And Bob, what part did you play in that game? Well, I was the winning pitcher. I pitched the uh, first game in Baltimore in over 50 years. And won it. Yes. And won $100 playing news to me with us tonight, Bob. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. A lot of good luck to you. Thank you. Quite a boy. 23-year-old Bob Turley, star of the Baltimore Orioles. Yes. Bob Turley, Yankee speedball king, winds up, delivers. Wow. Bob, yours is about the fastest ball I know, but when she acts up, it gets you down. Not for long, Mel. Give me a shower and a clean shave, and I'm on my way up. A Gillette shave does pick you up. Yours is a Gillette Super Speed Razor, the light. Yes, and look at the shaves I get. Smooth. Now there are three Gillette Super Speeds. The light for sensitive skin and most younger men. The regular for average skin and beard. The heavy for those who want the heft and feel of a heavier razor. Get hep to shaves you just can't tie for speed and comfort and good looks. Since he was widely regarded as the smartest player on the team, it wasn't surprising that Bob became an entrepreneur at an early age, capitalizing on every opportunity to advance his career. He was a student of the game, and uh, uh, I remember that he used to call a few pitches on the opposing pitchers. <laughs> he was an, uh, a very smart pitcher. He studied things intensely, and uh, uh, he was able, you know, to help a lot of hitters. So even on the day that Bob Turley wasn't pitching, he may contribute as much to the winning as uh, as anybody that was a pitcher ever could. Of course, he had one of the best fastballs that I've ever seen. That's why he got the nickname Bullet Bob. Hard thrower, very intelligent, a master of the game, knew what to do. The thing that impressed me was that here was a guy who had tremendous speed, tremendous velocity, and he was able to harness it and become an outstanding pitcher. And all people talked about was how hard Bob Turley threw. But Bob Turley was a thinking man's pitcher because he knew that he wasn't winning throwing a ball 95 miles an hour. So how can I become a winning pitcher? I have to maybe throw the ball 90 miles an hour and move the ball around a little bit. And uh, that's life, you have to make adjustments. He uh, fought our battles in the clubhouse for us, and uh, he was, he's, kept everybody together a lot of times when uh, some of us, he, he was pretty good about not drinking too much, you know, and uh, every once in a while he'd have come around and have a little pep talk, say, hey, you think you guys ought to cool it tonight or something like that? we got a big series tomorrow. Didn't help, but he said that. <laughs> Bullet Bob, he had one problem when he played baseball. He's a great pitcher, Cy Young winner. He didn't drink enough beer. And one year he was like 12 and 2, and then he got in a rut. He lost about five straight. And we were leaving Chicago. We left Chicago. He had just pitched there and lost. And Mickey and I got him on the train, and we bought a case of beer. We got about six beers into Bob. He changed his whole way of pitching, his attitude, and I think he went on to become the Cy Young winner uh, award that year. But he, he just never drank enough beer when he pitched. That was his problem. Bob was good up there. He threw hard. He had the control, and he'd be tough to beat. You had to baby him a little bit. You know, when he got wild a little bit, you had to go out and say, come on, Bob, you're better than that. Tremendous athlete that had a tremendous year in baseball, and I think more important, use that baseball to go into the business world and, and uh, to carry over and be very successful. He had a, a capacity greater than just baseball. Most players would go on the road and play and rest, and go to movies, play cards or whatnot. And, and not Bob, he worked at one time, you know, I think he was a owner, a part owner of, involved in two insurance companies at that time. And I saw right then that he far and away had more dedication, more determination, and more uh, uh, business uh, mind 
and he had uh, great disciplines and to, to do his work and, and things like that that impressed me. I mean, he's head and shoulders above anybody else I've ever seen in a game of baseball. Bob launched his financial services career during his playing days and eventually walked away from the game because he didn't want to accept a pay cut to become the pitching coach for the Atlanta Braves. He found a new passion as one of the original seven founders of A.L. Williams, which became number one in the industry and won seven national championships of its own. Bob would say, you know, I'd rather be an RVP at A.L. Williams than a pitcher with the New York Yankees in the seventh game of the World Series. Can you believe that? That, that was just the impact he had in the early days to give credibility to A.L. Williams was just unbelievable. I mean, he was just truly one of a kind. Bob had like seven World Series rings, but he always said that the ring he wore was his A.L. Williams Primerica ring. And we were like, well, why? Have you got seven World Series rings? You could wear one on every finger bat. And he was like, no, because the most money he ever made playing baseball was something like $35,000 in one year. And he said Primerica was a lot better to him than baseball ever was. He built one of the great, great sales organizations in the whole history of our industry. Not just our company, but the whole history of our industry. We did know Bob as a businessman, and he was a true innovator. When you hear the, the stories of the founding of the company, you know, a lot of times it was Bob as one of the original seven that, that came up with an idea about a product or came up with an idea about a business dynamic that made our business model different. And, and so he truly was an idea guy. Bob was very passionate about creating ownership for people in the sales force, which has changed thousands thousands of people's lives and change the net worth of their family forever. So in the future, the people of Primerica will always owe a debt of gratitude to the great Bob Turley. Bob's the kind of guy, I mean, you could bet your life on him. And you think about the Yankees, that, that team out there, that talent, and he's the guy that put them on his shoulders and, and just said, guys, I'm going to go out there and win this thing and get it done, and, and flat did it. And then, and then you look at, you know, Art Williams starting later on. Um, A.L. Williams and, and all the challenges we had early on and just kind of said, look guys, just get on my shoulders, I'll come through. Never scared anything, never backed down, never saw him ever back down from anybody any time that I was around him. Bob also had his priorities in order and his clean lifestyle was well suited for a family man. He loved his four children and his six grandchildren very much and he would do anything for them. His sons, Terry and Don, would sometimes join him on the field and Bob was very proud of both of them, his daughter Rowena and his late son Troy. Bob was survived by his wife Janet, who shared his passion for baseball. Bob always enjoyed his time with his family. Terry would later join him in the business, and Bob had the opportunity to mentor him and hundreds of other people. Bob was a really unique kind of guy. He was a guy that was always there for you. He was a friend and the real true meaning of a friend, not a fair weather friend. He really cared about people. He cared about his friends. He cared about the people in the office. He was just, he, he was a, a real genuine person. The guy was just so uh, overwhelmingly impressive. You stop and think of the, all the people that he ever played with. I mean, some of the great baseball players in the history of baseball, not only uh, did he play with them, but he excelled with them. And many of those people actually, uh, in later years, looked up to Bob as an idol. In his own way, in his own uh, personality, quiet personality type thing, was just dynamite inside. His will uh, and his intensity to win a ball game was unbelievable. That guy was a competitor like you couldn't believe. Nothing outward, so to speak. You see, he did it in his own way. Very quiet competitiveness. Here's a guy who, um, you know, and I told him this, you know, right before he passed away. I mean, I told him many, many times that, you know, through his efforts, especially in this business, and all that stuff with the Yankees is all great. But you think about the lives that he impacted directly and then indirectly, indirectly in A.L. Williams and in, in, in Primerica, literally millions and millions of people were affected in a positive way by Bullet Bob Turley. And you know, Art Williams always said, you know, just do it, do it till the job get, gets done. And, and old Bob Turley, flat, he, he flat did it, ain't no doubt about that. It was amazing to me that his influence was so deep, could be passed along from leader to leader to leader. With ball players, the one thing you can't do, you can't snow one another. 
And there has to be a certain amount of integrity involved with anything you do. Bob is a man of high integrity and high principle. And when people believe you and they believe in what you're doing, you're going to have success doing it. And he's that type of man, always has been. Bob was, a, was an impact guy in his entire life. I mean, you know, one of the things I most admire about Bob is, you know, we always talk about people come from all walks of life and join our company and stuff like that. Well, Bob, you know, had an amazingly successful life as a professional athlete and a baseball player. And one of the things as I get older, you learn is how many people that are very successful, young in their life in a sport, and then once they're done with that, they pretty much become old. Oh, yeah, you remember he was a big deal way back when. And Bob was a guy that uh, you know left a sport where he was a Cy Young winner and all that, but then went out and accomplished much more. Great guy, really a nice Bob, was a super guy. He's just been a nice man and a good friend over these years. Bob had an amazing. It was a humility about him, a softness about him but he also had a great self-assurance about who he was. It was just a really neat combination. Bob Turley is a study on what it takes to win big. You know, just an incredible, incredible character. Bob lived large. I mean, he, you know, he, he's the one that taught me that every restaurant was all you can eat. All you gotta do is keep ordering. You know, they'll keep bringing the food, you know, and, and uh, he, he was a big guy like that. But, but uh, at the end of the day, he was a real guy. I mean, he was just down to earth, uh, cared about people, uh, wanted to find a way to help people if, if they wanted to help themselves. I mean, you couldn't have found a better friend, a better ally to help you do anything if you wanted to go get it done than Bob Turley. I mean, he was a guy who knew how to get it done. He could stretch your vision like nobody I've ever seen, uh, but flat tell you the game plan to go get it done and, 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 and run it with you. And that's the fun thing is, boy, I mean, every time, you know, I'd go see him, even in the, the last days in the uh, nursing home and the hospice everywhere we go every time he'd look up because man didn't we have some fun you know and and I think to be able to say that I mean that's a whole lot that's a mouthful right there to you know to look back and say man we've had we've had a good run and had a lot of fun. I, I would like them to remember me as a guy who was just part of the team that would just do anything to help this team win and somebody that they could count on.